He sits right there while I film. He loves me. Oh, he loves me. And he also hates me because I annoy him. Yeah, you love me, but you hate me. You love me, but you hate me. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome to day six of the 12 collabs of Choimus. Yay! That is correct. In the month of December, I'm uploading 12 collab videos. So subscribe because I know you don't want to miss out on these. Today's collab is with the lovely, beautiful Mia from Mia's Virtual Vanity. Oh, Mia and I, we have been friends since I started my channel. She deserves all the subscribers in the world, so go subscribe to her if you're not already. She looks at the beauty industry from the perspective of a makeup lover, but also very critically. In the past, I've said she has big brain energy. I still stand by that 1000%. I never, ever, ever miss an upload from Mia, not just because we're friends, but also because I always look forward to what she has to say and what perspective she has to give. I also highly recommend you follow her on Instagram for some gorgeous looks, but also on her Instagram stories every day, she posts some, some highbrow memes that make you feel smart for understanding them. So definitely follow her on Instagram. If you are coming from Mia's channel and you're meeting me for the first time, hello, I'm so happy to meet you. Let me know that you came from Mia in the comments so I could say hi. For today's collab, we are sharing our favorite duochrome eyeshadows. I was very strict to only pick 10, 10 duochrome eyeshadows, and I have so many more than that, but I just wanna share with y'all what my favorite favorites are. And one of them is heavily featured on my eyes today, and that is the one and only JD Glow Unexpected. It is literally the eyeshadow to end all eyeshadows. I'm gonna move over to the overhead perspective soon, but to let you know what I'll be doing, I will be giving you live swatches of all of these so you can see them in action and like in movement. And I will also be showing you what they look like on my eyelids. And so that's another reason why I only picked top 10 because Firstly, I love rankings, but secondly, I don't want my eyelids to die today. Hello, I have my top 10 picks laid out here. Um, I have some from JD Glow, Sydney Grace, ColourPop, and just three within these two palettes. So let me first start out with JD Glow. Let's do Unexpected because I've already talked about that shade and I just wanna show you again, talk about it again as many times as I can. So I will give you the swatches on my forearm. The description for Unexpected is absolutely insane. It is on the site described as glittery silver green gold with purple green teal and gold effects. So I don't even know what, I can't even conceptualize what that would look like just from the description. Um, but this is like a very soft, hyper reflective formula and it's a little bit flaky, um, a bit of a softer formula. The texture actually reminds me of thin flakes of edible gold, like that in the past I've seen on ice cream and whatnot, <laughs> like that texture that flakes a little bit, but you can rub it in and really like melt the flakes into each other. So there is unexpected. It's not swatching very well over my tendons here. <laughs> Let me build that up again towards the outer edges so you can see. It is so sparkly. I literally have nothing else like this in my collection. I use this as a single shadow look a lot and that's because the level of depth it reaches in the shadows is actually considerably deep. So I have monolids, meaning I don't have really an identifiable crease on my eyes. In the past, I haven't really liked that about my eyes, but it does offer an advantage in terms of duochromes because you can really see the dimension and the shift just because you, my eye has a very prominent curvature to it, so you can see more of the, the, the shift in this shade. Absolutely insane. This is like my number one shadow in my entire collection. I also wanted to feature my other two JD Glow Galaxy shadows just because they're so special and they're not as sparkly, as flaky, as metallic, as in like gold flakes <laughs> as Unexpected is, but they're still very special. So this is the shade Sin. Sin is described as a sheer lavender with a green shift. And these are more powdery, again, not as flaky as Unexpected is, but there's what it looks like on my finger. And here is Sin swatched on my arm and then build it up again. So, you know, like 
When you compare it to Unexpected next to it, it doesn't look that unique or it doesn't look that outstanding. But when I swatch it to similar shades such as this one, this is really intense as well. And here's how it looks just all over my eye. These swatches may be a little bit haphazard looking, but I mostly wanted to show y'all how this looks on the curvature of an eyeball. Not really a very precise kind of thick eyeliner shaped wing. This last JD Glow shadow is called Opal, described as a light soft pink with blue green shift. So here is what Opal looks like on my finger. A lot lighter than Sin next to it. And swatching out Opal, it really has like a, a fairy-like iridescence to it. Oh yeah. When I look at the shade Opal in the movement and across a curve, it reminds me of how the moon shines. It's very like cool and silvery, but very iridescent, very celestial. All of these are gorgeous. If I had to rank them, I would say Unexpected number one, Opal number two, and Sin number three. But that doesn't mean that I dislike any of them because they are strong enough to have made it into my top 10. Those are my JD Glow. Next, let's do my favorite Sydney Grace shadow. And so here I have a single in The Greatest Gift. This is described as a light pink with a green shift. The shift on Greatest Gift is a lot more green than either of these two have been. So Sydney Grace is less of a sparkly forma formula and more of a smooth formula. Oh wow, so the depth of it is similar in tone to Sin, but the reflect and the way it catches light is actually stronger than the JD Glow one. This is my first time swatching them side by side, so that's actually surprising to me. I wonder if the camera is capturing how much more sparkly JD Glow is, but those are just what the tones look like side by side. I also have the shade from Sydney Grace Winter Garden here, which is kind of like a purple to blue shift, but it's not nearly as remarkable as The Greatest Gift is. I find Winter Garden is a little bit dull. Not a, it, wasn't, it didn't exactly meet my expectations, not to say it's a bad shadow, but it's just not making it into my top 10. Here's what The Greatest Gift looks like on the eyes. Just very fairy-like. This one is the most, quote, fairy-like <laughs> among my top 10 picks, I would say. Can you imagine these colors just in the reflective glimmer of a fairy's wings fluttering in the sunlight? The next shade I have is a single from Urban Decay, and this is the shade Lounge. Hannah Louise Poston talks about this shade a ton, and it is a brick red with a green shift. There is also a Moon Dust single shadow from Urban Decay called Solstice, which looks to be similar in tone, just with the more glitter and sparkle in it. I don't have Solstice, but I know that Lauren May Beauty does, and she really enjoys that shade. But anyways, the Urban Decay Lounge looks to be more of like a smooth version of that. The shadows of it really are impressively red, red tone, very, um, not, not just like a very red brown, but the red does come through. The shift on lounge is a little bit more subtle, um, but I think this lends itself really well to a single shadow look. If you blend it out, it'll essentially look like this reddish toned neutral with just a little bit of something special on the highest point of the eyelid. Here's what Urban Decay Lounge looks like all over the eyelid, and you can see that the base tone of this really is much stronger than the highlight or the reflect tone of it. And even though this isn't like, say, the most sparkly, the most intense kind of shade, it still made it into my top 10 because there's something very warm and charming about this. It's very approachable, very easy to use, very easy to wear. Next, let's talk about my ColourPop singles. And these I suspect I may share with Mia in our videos. So here I have Tea Garden and here I have Glass Bowl. Tea Garden is described as a red with a green gold flip. And this is the only shadow that I have that has that combination of colors in a duochrome. The ColourPop duochrome formula really is a lot thinner and um, you need to build it up more than say Sydney Grace or JD Glow. But these are my first duochromes that I purchased as singles. And even though they're thin and need to be built up, I think that just as you use it in every day, you can get a really nice look from these. So you can see it's not like the most crazy shadow ever, but you can also see that just give it a couple, couple layers and all of the dimension really comes through. 
Okay, so there are a couple layers of tea garden. You can see the red base with the green gold flip to it. I adore this shade as a single shadow look just because the blending, quote, blending of this shade looks so smooth and it looks like you're just a blending master when really the shade did it all, all the work for you. Next I have Glass Bowl, which may be their best selling shade on their entire website. It's described as a duochrome lavender icy blue. Again, this ColourPop formula, very thin, um, maybe needs some building, maybe a little bit more of a topper kind of shade. This kind of matches my nails too, but um, here is the first swatch of ColourPop Glass Bowl. This is the kind of shade that you can top over or pat gently over any eyeshadow look and really just add that extra dimension. Yes, that lavender base with the icy blue shift and it's just gorgeous. This kind of pink to blue duochrome, pink to green, you can tell I really like with these three picks here. Here's what ColourPop Glass Bowl looks like just all over the eyelids and I did build this up to essentially what its full capacity or full potency can be. I can definitely see why this is one of ColourPop's best-selling shades, if not the most best-selling shade. So here's how it looks on my very curvy eye. So here we have my first seven picks. They were among my single shadows. Now for my last three of my top 10, they are in palettes. Oh, among my ColourPop shadows, I forgot to mention that I also have the shade Earthshine, which is within their, it's my pleasure palette, their purple toned palette. It is a duochrome, it's wonderful as well. Um, it, it's just not as iconic to me as Tea Garden and Glass Bowl are, so it's not included in my top 10, but I do really enjoy that one as well. I'll give you like a quick swatch of it. I Maybe not an eye swatch, but just at least a, like an arm swatch so you can see what that shade looks like but there is Earthshine. This can be my not in my top 10 arm. <laughs> okay, now moving on to palettes. So my other three picks are from the Jackie Ina palette and my Alter Ego Daydream. Let me first show you the Daydream pick. My favorite shade in this palette is Fairy Tale, which is described as a medium pink with sparkle. That's like the official description. It's not described as having a shift or being a duochrome or anything, but it definitely is. <laughs> Let me show you what it looks like when I build it up. And the formula of this is very creamy. You can see like my fingers indent when I swipe into this pan. Here's a swatch, very creamy as I said. I love this shade, fairy tale. Now this doesn't really have a strong shift. Maybe it isn't a duochrome, but <laughs> I consider it to be just because the way it catches the light. And you can even see like the dimension in the pan itself. And it even looks, you know, more blue in the light than in the shadows. In the shadows, it has that very pink tone, almost like a magenta, but then in the light, it has pink mixed in with some blue. Here's what Fairy Tale looks like all over the eyelid, and you can see how it catches the light at the high point. Last two shades within my Jackie Ina, I was about to call it ColourPop, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette, and I have pretty much to nobody's surprise. First I'll show you Sponsored and then I'll show you Lituation. Those are my two picks. Sponsored is a metallic chocolate with teal shift and the teal shift really is strong. I'm surprised to see it described as teal. I consider it more of a, like a green, like a true green. There's a swatch of Sponsored and I'm gonna build this up because when you apply this shade very sheerly, you mostly see the chocolate brown, but then with a little bit of extra layering, that green comes through a lot. Oh yeah, so there is sponsored from the Jackie Ina palette. I'll fill in this tail a bit. Here it is on the eye. This combination of brown and green is also a combination I don't see a lot within duochromes. When I think of duochromes, I think of like just the pink and the blue and green kind of shade. But using this brown in a duochrome, especially with green as opposed to with like blue, which is what I've seen before, it's very earthy and very approachable for like the average makeup wear, the average consumer. The last shade is Lituation, described as a metallic deep taupe with a violet shift. And there's what it looks like on my finger. This shift is not super dramatic either, but I love how this looks just all over the eye. So here it is firstly on my forearm in this last little inch of space. <laughs> so there's a first layer. It's already very strong just in one layer, but let me build it up. 
And by strong, I mean um, like the base color is very strong and deep. So there is lituation. Again, it's not like the most potent shift, but the shade itself really does hold its own when it's all over the eye. You can see the taupe to the purple. Here it is all over the eye, very smoky, very dramatic. It looks almost editorial. Obviously, if I'm putting it all over the eye in this kind of shape, it's gonna look pretty editorial. Imagine this eyeshadow with some thick, bold eyelashes, and I'm pretty sure no one would bat an eye or think that this look was strange. <laughs> I just, my eyelids at this point, this was the 10th shade I swatched on my eyelids. They could not handle lashes or even mascara. There we have it, my darlings, my top 10 duochrome shades. Y'all know how obsessed I am with duochromes and I have a long list of indie shadows that I want to try, but indie shadows are a little more expensive. I have a lot of eyeshadows, so I'm moving through that list very slowly. If you have any recommendations for me, give them to me. Just come at me with them. I want to know them all. Be sure to watch Mia's video. I anticipate that she will have some Nabla single shadows, which I don't have, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what she picks. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I just, I want to give y'all a big hug, but alas, that is the nature of being an internet person. But I really do appreciate every single one of y'all, every single view, every comment. It, I mean, I'm just... A person filming alone with her cat and uh, it's kind of grown into this. So I always want y'all to remember that y'all are my treasure. Mm -hmm. Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!